Hey guys and welcome to the second instalment of my fitness vlog. Thank you to all of those positive comments and support that I've received from those who have watched this video and have left a comment below. I am truly happy with the positivity that has come out of my first video and it was quite a, I wouldn't say a massive step for me, but it was definitely something a little bit different to what I'm used to. So it was a little bit outside my comfort zone, but I'm glad that I'm influencing people and sort of inspiring people to do things. And that's basically what this video is or these videos are as this title suggests today is about five things to look for in a good personal trainer now i'm going to say straight away a lot of people are going to watch this video and there's going to be that barrier between myself and you because a lot of people can't afford a personal trainer i get it personal training is an expensive way to go if you want to get into shape and most people can't afford a personal trainer i am lucky enough that i can afford a personal trainer i wouldn't be able to afford a very expensive personal trainer but i just wanted to give some tips for those who actually wanted to look for somebody to help them and support them in the gym or perhaps somebody who just wanted to go and visit a couple for a couple of sessions and get some idea of how to strength train properly therefore they could do it themselves what to look for. I don't quite know if that last sentence made sense, but never mind. Before we start, I think I mentioned this in my first video, but I'll mention it again. The reason why I chose a personal trainer to go down my exercise route since August of last year is just because um, unexpected things. It's just because I sort of reached a fork in the road for me where I felt like I was going to do more damage than good not getting some professional help. That is the reason why I opted for a personal trainer. My initial goal was not to have a personal trainer for every single session in the gym and it kind of turned out that I've now got a personal trainer permanently and I've got him for three sessions a week. So that's a personal choice. That is an expensive personal choice but not as expensive as you might think. So let's just get into the video and talk about the five things you should look for in a good personal trainer. Number one, I like this list don't I? Number one is personalization. Now let me just start off by saying that before I got a personal trainer I just assumed that all personal trainers were pretty similar as in they knew what they were doing. Oh how naive was I because believe me, believe me, there are very 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 different personal trainers and when I say very different personal trainers I'm not talking about those that like to box and those that like to strength train, free weights, whatever it may be. I mean in terms of there are some personal trainers that are up here as being absolutely astounding and then there's some personal trainers that are all the way down to the bottom of the floor that I wouldn't even train with them if they paid me. That That's how low they are and it's amazing just how many of those unfortunately there are. Someone like me who has no previous experience with personal training, I was very lucky, honest to god, so lucky. I just went on the website of the gym I was at. I looked through the personal trainers, I found the first one that said strength training and I contacted him. And as it turned out, he is, or was, or is, I suppose he's still there, he is one of the best personal trainers in my gym without a doubt. And then there are those in the gym that I sort of look at and think if I'd got you, would I actually be where I am today and have built up this body? Probably not. And I would have spent a lot of money getting to the point where I realized that. The first point is, as I said, personalization. When you get a personal trainer, you need to really step back and see how the personal trainer reacts to you and your needs and your goals. For example, when my personal trainer first started talking to me, he asked me various questions. He asked me to send him a typical day for me, um, a typical day active and so on, so he could see how many calories roughly or how much I was burning off, how much cardio I was doing walking around in my job, so he could balance that up. He asked me to send him an example of a day of what I eat, so again he could see my sort of choices and what I liked and disliked. He found out very quickly I was a vegan, so he was able to accommodate that. And then he asked for my goals, and um, the goals I suppose should be further up, but they're just as important as the diet. In fact, the diet is the most important part of my journey here but he asked me what my goals were what I wanted to achieve and the time frame in which I wanted to do it now obviously if I went in there and said I want to look like I don't know Michelle Lewin in two weeks he would have probably laughed in my face but he sort of spoke to me he said what my goals were he asked sort of what I wanted to get body wise uh, what I was willing to do what I didn't want to do and he gave me the time frame that I would get those results all the way through this journey from August of last year his training sessions, the diets he's given me, 
the advice he's given me, they have all been personalised to me. So if you meet a personal trainer, or if you, for example, decide to share with somebody else and go together as a pair, and your personal trainer doesn't ask questions like that, just assumes that you are eating a healthy diet, or just gives you a generic diet that you should all be eating, that to me is a warning sign to step back, because your diet is going to be different to your friend's diet, even if you both have the same goals. They have to take so many things into consideration to get the diet that is right for you, and they should not be afraid either to tweak it and change it when things don't work or things can be done better. Point number two I can count this week is knowledge of nutrition. Now you would not believe how many personal trainers do not have knowledge of nutrition. It's not just about knowing what to eat that's healthy and what's not healthy because most people on the street nowadays can probably figure that one out. What I mean by knowledge of nutrition is knowing what is right for different body types, females, for males, what is right for those trying to build up muscle, those trying to cut down. Your personal trainer really needs to know what is going into your mouth, what are you eating. I think I said this in the first video, if I did I'm repeating myself, what I consume on a daily basis is more important than me lifting weights at the gym. Definitely 100%. If I had been doing the same routine with him since August of last year, but had gone home and eaten a load of rubbish, or even if I'd eaten healthily, but I wasn't eating enough, or I was overeating, or I wasn't eating the right types of food, I would not have achieved the body I have now. Without a doubt, the nutrition part of it is the most important part. What you consume is more important than your exercise if you want to achieve your goals. The whole way through this process with my personal trainer, I have had my diet tweaked, changed, etc. He knows exactly when to increase carbs, when to reduce fat, when to increase fat, when I want to shred, what I should do, when I want to gain mass, what I should do. And the second that I start the new diets that he's given me, and within a matter of weeks of eating these diets, I see results so, so quickly. If he didn't know what he was doing nutrition-wise, and just knew what he was doing with the weights, I would not have achieved what I've got today. If you have a personal trainer that's booming and ahhing, you're eating a diet, you're doing exactly what he's saying you're doing, or she, and in a matter of weeks you're not noticing results, you need to really question, step back, and decide whether that personal trainer is right for you. Number three on my list is, and I don't know how to shrink this down, knowing your goals and how to achieve it. Now that just sounds really simple, it sounds like something every personal trainer should know, because they're going to ask your goal. Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to tone up? Do you want to gain muscle? They obviously need to know that beforehand so they know how to train you. But again, it's amazing when you see, well when I see, personal trainers in my gym training clients who want to gain muscle and they're training them lots and lots and lots and lots of cardio. Your personal trainer needs to know what muscle groups to work, where to go about it and what exercises to do. At the same time, they need to know versatility. They need to know that they can't train the same muscle groups in the same way every single week. My personal trainer when I'm training makes sure first of all that I'm training the right muscle that I can feel the right muscle so for example if I'm training triceps and I'm feeling it somewhere else he needs to know and he's going to ask me because then he knows that I'm doing it incorrectly or I'm not posturing myself correctly. When I'm training he'll look at me look at the parts of the body that I'm working and say we need to work on this part of your arm or this part of your back or this part of your leg and he'll know the exact equipment to go to in order to do that. And I think that's really, really important that you have that constant communication. If you have a personal trainer that just meets you every time you have a session, goes through various things and does the same thing day in, day out, or perhaps changes it up a bit, but doesn't ever ask you how you're feeling or whether or not the results are reflected on what you wanted, that just sort of shows you that perhaps they're doing something quite generic. They're not really thinking about your specific goals and perhaps again, you need to step back and find somebody who's perhaps a little bit more appropriate for you. Number four on this list is perhaps, I think, alongside nutrition, as important. In fact, this is probably more important than nutrition. So number four on my list is the knowledge and the understanding of safe practice. And what I mean by that is posture. There are so many people in the gym. Now, I'm gonna be honest. If I had gone to the gym myself and I had trained using the different equipment, using the weights, 
I would be one of these people, so I'm not sort of sitting on my high horse thinking that I'm better than everyone else. But since being with my trainer, I have learned the importance of posture, keeping your back straight in situations, making sure your body is in the correct position when you're doing the exercise. So not only are you utilizing and engaging that part of the body that you're trying to train, but also that you're doing it safely so there's not going to be any injuries. It is amazing that there are personal trainers in my gym that I see training clients and their clients have bent backs, they have their posture wrong, and I just think that is going to hurt tomorrow and not in the correct way. So it's really important that your personal trainer is constantly correcting you, and it's thanks to mine that I have now been able to go and train myself in legs, train myself in back and biceps, and I'm fully confident that my back is straight at all times, I'm in the correct posture, in the correct position, and I'm not doing any damage to my spine, to my legs, to whatever it may be. It worries me because I just think that that could do damage very quickly, or if not short term, definitely some sort of long term damage if you keep training your clients in that way. And number five on my list is sort of what I've already covered, but I'm going to give it a little chapter of its own, and that is personal trainers who know when to repeat and when to change. And I mean this in two different ways. First and foremost, when you're exercising, you need to have a personal trainer that knows the reps that are right for you. Some personal trainers just stick to three sets of 12 reps. And for those who perhaps don't know the lingo, I'm sure most of you do, but reps just mean repetition, so how many times you do something. So for example, if I was doing sumo squats, then I would do 12 sumo squats, give myself a break, 12 more to give myself a break, 12 more, etc. Your personal trainer, first and foremost, needs to know the reps that are right for you for your goals. For example, at the moment, I'm training very quickly to build up mass, and I'm consuming, as I said, 5,200 calories at the moment, so a lot of food. So we are doing long reps, very, very short rests in between. So I'm doing 15 to 18 reps, 30 second rest, doing it again, 30 second rest, doing it again. Different goals for different people. If you're making yourself lean, you might do less reps, give yourself a little bit more break, but do more sets of them overall. It really, really depends on your particular goals as a person as to how many reps you're doing and the rests in between and how many exercises you should do in one session. What I also mean by a personal trainer knowing when to repeat and when to change comes to both the diet and the actual exercises you should do. For example, the first two to three weeks when I was training with him back in August, when I did, for example, leg day, I did the same activity, but just built up the weight. Then after then, he changed it up. So for example, even though I was working the same muscle area of my legs, he would give me different exercises. So I was constantly changing things up. If you go to the gym every single day or two times a week, three, four, five, whatever times a week, and you do the exact same exercise every single week, your body is going to get used to it and you're going to get less results. The same works for diet. If I had stuck with the same diet and he hadn't have changed it up, my body would have got used to that diet. And therefore, it would have been less effective than what I did when I was changed every five to six weeks. Overall, personal training is a very, very popular profession to get into at the moment. More and more people are starting to come out of the woodwork and get themselves involved actively in various exercises. Obviously, personal training is definitely going up as a profession that a lot of people want to get into. My advice for you is just to really, really step back and look at the situation. If someone's got the title personal trainer, that doesn't necessarily mean that they will have your goals at heart and they are the person for you. Listen to what they have to say. Listen to their knowledge of nutrition. Ask them questions. Do not be afraid. You are giving them your money. Ask them questions. You want to check that they are checking you when you're exercising for your posture, for your poise. You need to be checking every few weeks. If you are not getting the results that you want to get in the short term, do not be afraid to question, to swap over personal trainers until you find the one right for you. Never settle for somebody who is taking your money and you're not seeing the results you want. So that is my experience of personal training. I hope it's been really useful and check out my next fitness vlog where I'm going to be talking about my diet. If you haven't done so already please subscribe. I know this channel is saturated with Lush and that's the main thing on this channel but there are going to be more fitness vlogs coming up from me as well as other lifestyle vlogs in the near future. Until next time, bye!